Hey everybody and welcome back to the channel. I want to say thanks for tuning in. Uh, today I'm going to go over my fun little experience at El Mirage and uh, later testing at Crow's Nest. Uh, we had a crazy experience there and uh, a lot of pitfalls that kept us from doing really what we wanted to do, but I'm going to share some of those experiences with you over this video. First of all, we uh, encountered a couple problems with uh, multiple vehicles uh, in this whole entire trip. So the van we took out there, it's a 2000 Econoline van, um, and we hit a massive pothole on the way in, uh, ended up hitting the motor on the top of the cab um, and blowing the air intake off. Couldn't find it out for about a couple days, but luckily John Horry came out, buddy from Instagram, and he's a certified mechanic, so he helped debug the problem, which was great because that was super stressful. We had no way of getting back for about two days, and we were kind of freaking out about that, taking some time away from working on the bike. But luckily John was there to save the day. Now, I didn't expect this whole thing to be easy. Um, you know, going into this, talking to all these people, uh, I knew it was, this was going to be a hard task. And, you know, I love building the bike. I love doing all the math, the engineering. Um, and the logistics side is something that's just a little foreign to me as far as racing. So this is my real first experience bringing a bike out, um, getting it ready for the race, and trying to do all the um, the prep work, the engineering, and also trying to coordinate uh, and be the driver at the same time was a lot of uh, pressure and a lot, a lot more than I thought it was going to be. So there was a lot of things that were uh, really kind of looked over. Um, and not that it was unsafe, it was just a little too fast, a little too unprepared. And this was a, a great learning experience for me to come out here, get my hands dirty, um, literally, and try and, you know, see how it was going to be and learn as much as I could so I can come home and improve everything. So that being said, um, you know, great learning experience and I wouldn't trade it for the world. Now we made it out there, I think Friday morning uh, before inspection and uh, we got the bike unloaded. Uh, here's some beautiful pictures of the, the bike out at the lake bed. I ended up skinning the wing with uh, some plywood from Home Depot um, so that we have a place to put some of those GoFundMe names and my logo and my race number. Um, but we did run into a couple issues with that, um, mostly towing the bike there. We brought a little e-bike with us and uh, that ended up tipping over uh, along with some aluminum and punching a big hole in the, in the freshly made wing. So it wasn't quite planned, uh, but you know, I think a little gaffer's tape. The course was actually really uh, not good this weekend and it was super loose and there wasn't a lot of wind so that there's low visibility so you could see a lot of the uh, contestants going through the line and, and they didn't even know they went through the finish line so they would pull their shoot super late so not the best conditions for me to start out for my first run but you know we were hopeful that we would get out there and at least do our rookie run which is capped at 150 miles per hour so we went over to, to inspection started zip tying all the loose ends um, moving stuff around, getting all the small things done that we didn't quite get done at home, but I figured I'd be able to get out there and do them. So some of the changes that we had to make were um, additional electric shutoff stickers and, and their locations. Um, after I got inspected we actually had to be observed for our first run so you can see we had to make some changes um, to the fire extinguisher mounting uh, additional stickers for the energy shut or the electrical shutoff um, that's the actual 12 volt electrical shutoff and that runs back to a smaller piece in the back um, that you can pull to shut it off we actually had to uh, tweak our fire extinguisher locations as well um, I moved one down in between the legs to spray up uh, I disconnected the one in the front by my face and the bigger one was we had these race seats I had made these race seats and, and they were just a bit too big So we ended up cutting almost an inch off of the bottom of them to lower me down For the new suit and to get a little bit better fit so I could get out of the out of the bike a little bit more um, promptly After we passed inspection, I was feeling real good about the whole entire process I felt comfortable on the bike I felt that like we were gonna take this first run and you know at least get a rookie run out of the way and get somewhere around a hundred something miles an hour uh, we actually had a video crew come out because they're pretty excited about this project and they were there uh, taking some beautiful sunset photos of the bike and me and dramatic walking things so I want to say thanks to Matt from uh, Space Fawn or Frame 44 for coming out and, and helping with the whole entire project 
definitely put a little bit more stress on the whole thing, um, having all these people out there, you know, following me around and not really helping, but they did a great job um, staying out of the way and helping when they could. So, but this is the point where I was feeling real good and it was all going to turn from here because we just, uh, I guess, didn't accommodate for everything. So, yep. So the next morning, wake up to some nitro cars running, some loud V8s ripping. That's a NASCAR engine in my buddy's uh, Lakester. Um, here's another uh, nitro Triumph bike by Alp. Now, as we got ready to take the bike, we had to actually tow it out to the start line. And one of the issues we have with that is I'd never really set anything up. And uh, as we were moving the bike backwards, I grabbed the front wheel to change the, the steering angle. And uh, the momentum of the bike actually pulled my hand through the front tire and shock tire mount. And you can see there it's metal versus skin and skin doesn't do too well. So it ended up um, tearing my hand, uh, the first two fingers on my left hand, you can see there. It was pretty deep, it's about three eighths of an inch deep, cut all the way through my finger. And it wasn't the worst cut, um, but it was something that I couldn't really pull the parachutes with. And that was a real concern of mine. Um, that was a major factor in this first rookie run was being able to pull the parachutes and control the bike. So that was pretty much the end of the run. Unfortunately, it was just like cut right there. You know, everyone was super excited. We were all pumped up. Everyone's feeling good. And just a total buzz kill, you know, just basically chunked my hand and had to make the executive decision to, to go to the hospital so I didn't lose a finger. It was pretty dirty out there. A lot of dust, a lot of dirt, and uh, it just wasn't worth risking my fingers with that deep of a cut. Um, so we ended up having to go to the hospital, scrapping the run. Um, super unfortunate, but you know, that's the way it goes, I guess, with racing. You doing good? Not feeling it? No. Can't feel my fingers, babe. Trey! <laughs> Hope you got a good one. Pour one out for the homie! Yeah! yeah. <laughs> 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 so after a mirage we just uh, you know i personally felt like i'd let some people down I, I really didn't wasn't prepared wasn't ready you know a lot of people came out to help and i just you know i, I fucked up so i just wanted to take the bike out and run it that's all i wanted to do at all mirage so we decided to, to find a spot near closer to home that we could run it and at least do some test drives that was off the main road uh, we found a spot in the Central Valley of California where you can actually run some cars um, on a two-mile landing strip. It's actually a decommissioned NASA Air Force base from the 50s and 60s. And it's still out there. It's got a couple cracks in it and stuff like that. But there's a, a good amount of people that go out there and run their cars and drag race and stuff like that. So I figured it was worth a try. Take the bike out there. Get some seat time with the new tires. Um, do, get some data on, you know, discharge loads at higher, higher speeds. So we got it unloaded, um, blew all the El Mirage dust off of it, which was pretty funny. And at that point, um, we were ready to, to hop on in and, and get started. So this is actually just a test run. I wanted to take the bike out and uh, do a little bit of balance work before we took it up to speed. Uh, running through the sequences and starting the bike up, which is main power, uh, cooling fans. Then I hit the pre-charge circuit, the main one, turn the pre-charge circuit off, and then hit the drive enable. You can see here I'm dragging the skis pretty hard at the beginning. I turn in, to accelerate, and that usually tips the bike up. Um, the balance was just like I remember it, you know, just like just like learning to drive a streamliner. It comes right back to you once you get it up. So um, after a couple of runs, I actually got pretty good. I could I could turn around within the width of the runway, which was pretty impressive in my book without really hitting the skids. Um, this is actually my first attempt. I think I tap a couple times, but I'm, I'm only rolling about 25 miles per hour, really getting the feel of the bike, the throttle, making sure all the controls work and function properly. Uh, touchdown right there, you can hear it. Pick up the speed a little bit, check the acceleration. Mm -hmm. 
So we missed the first run, unfortunately. It's some problems with the camera, but this is the second Slow run. Slow down. Definitely was a learning experience for me. The runway with the cracks was a little bumpy. Um, the wind noise was uh, more aggressive than I thought it would be. How'd it feel? How'd it look? Good. Huh? You're bouncing. I'm bouncing pretty bad. I think the wheel's out of bounds. Okay. You see it? Yeah. yeah. Number two was 94.9 miles per hour. <laughs> <laughs> not my favorite. All right, so we got two runs. We're packing it back up. And uh, yeah, one run was 95 miles per hour. The other one was 65 miles per hour. Um, the main goal was to pretty much figure out how the bike worked. Uh, we didn't get a chance to even run it with the new wheels on at El Mirage. So got it out, drove it around, went about 30 miles an hour a couple times. We're on the return run. Um, had some issue with the parachute coming out, which is good to know right now. And we also had some issues with the regen faulting the motor out, which meant I had to go all manual brakes, hydraulic, but um, that's a lot of heat, and I think I smoked the rotor. So um, we'll have to look into uh, figuring out what the max load on the regen is. I think we overvoltaged the motor when I hit it too hard, so we got to adjust the code for that. But if you can see, you can see them. They're not supposed to be that purple-blue color, but... We'll see, they were working really well. I was pulsing them, but they got really hot. This bike's really heavy, and that's one little rotor and one little caliper trying to stop 2,000 pounds. Part of this whole testing was to get some data and uh, we got some really good data actually. Um, this kind of shows the speed profile that the mouse is following and the orange little peaks here are, are the throttle commands with some noise. Now we capped the throttle down to 65% only to uh, protect the motor under testing so I didn't really um, uh, irreparably damage the whole entire thing but you can see there's a lot of acceleration pickup at 65% throttle. This will all be ramped up as we do some more testing. Uh, we also have some voltage drops and some total power outputs. Um, the batteries are not per performing quite as well as I thought they would, but we're going to push them to the limit and see what we can get out of them. And uh, yeah, they're pretty much disposable at this point because I have a couple extras um, sitting around. So once again, I want to say thank you so much to all the people that contributed to the GoFundMe. Um, you, we've got your names. A couple of you guys uh, aren't on there only because the, the die cut people missed a couple uh, files, but uh, definitely going to add those to the to the list there and it, it's still open so if you guys want to go to the GoFundMe or you guys are interested in helping the project you're more than welcome to throw down 50 bucks and you can get your name on the side of the bike so thanks for watching be sure to Tina make sure comment to... like and subscribe there you go comment like subscribe ring that bell thank you so much guys uh, for watching I want to say this has been a crazy experience and it's been awesome sharing it with you guys and be sure to, to follow along, subscribe and ring the bell so you can see when stuff comes out. So thank you.